falling in love sucks. That's probably not something you've ever heard, right? Because when we think about falling in love, we tend to think of butterflies, heart racing, and endless dreaming. Or at least that's how movies, songs, and social media make it out to be. But did you know it can be a real pain sometimes too? Here are some raw, unfiltered reasons why falling in love isn't always the magical ride it's cracked up to be. Modern day cynicism. With the abundance of scientific studies and the influence of the nihilist movement, younger generations often dissect their feelings, reducing love to a mere chemical reaction in the brain. They argue that marriage is primarily a legal institution and an economic proposition. Modern society has also made it more acceptable to be in open relationships and polyamorous relationships, further complicating things. This perpetuates a widespread fear of commitment, where many opt for casual connections over deeper emotional bonds due to an abundance of options and a sense of impermanence. The social media trap. In today's digital age, falling in love often means putting your relationship on display. So we tend to have sky high expectations of what love should be like. But real relationships are messy and require effort communication, and compromise. And social media can create a lot of pressure to maintain a perfect image, which can leave you constantly comparing your relationship to others, feeling inadequate, or even staging moments just for the sake of a good post. The gap between what we expect and what we get can be disappointing. Psychologically compromising. It's a scientific fact that when you fall in love, rational thought just flies out the window and every emotion tends to hit you like a ton of bricks. This is because love suppresses the part of the brain responsible for critical thinking, the prefrontal cortex. Your heart races, your palms sweat, and neurochemicals like dopamine and norepinephrine flood your brain, whether you're with your crush or even just thinking about them. But then your serotonin plummets when you're apart for too long or they don't text you back right away, kicking you off cloud nine. Neglected friendships. Friendships are not less important than romantic relationships, but sometimes love can create unintended rifts. Your priorities shift, even if you don't mean them to. And suddenly your once regular hangouts become less frequent as you spend more time talking to your crush and going on dates. Your friends might feel neglected, missing the spontaneity of your friendship and having so much of your time and attention. In turn, you might miss out on important moments in their lives and find yourself on the outside of their inside jokes and shared adventures. Clouded judgment. Have you ever looked at a red flag through rose-colored lenses? You can't because they make you colorblind. If you're in love with the wrong person, you might find yourself making excuses for behavior that you'd never tolerate from a friend or family member. Only when the initial rush of falling in love fades away, can you clearly see all the warning signs everyone's been telling you about. Attachment styles. Did you know that your attachment style determines who you fall in love with? Falling in love is an unconscious process. So if your attachment style is unhealthy, it's like being on autopilot to heartbreak. Developed in early childhood, these styles shape our relationships. If you have an insecure attachment style, anxious, avoidant, or disorganized, you're more likely to get your heart broken. Anxious attachments often lead towards avoidant partners because they're seeking validation and reassurance. They're drawn to them because they see the independence and distance of avoidant types as a challenge to figure out in their quest for emotional closeness. Now, when it comes to those with disorganized attachments, they tend to be drawn to unpredictable partners. It's like they're accustomed to inconsistency and somehow find comfort and familiarity in the chaos of such relationships. Falling in love can really suck when our attachment styles lead us into toxic relationships and emotional chaos. 
But hey, maybe going through all that mess is what helps us figure out our issues and break free from those harmful cycles. That's the key to finding the good, healthy relationships we deserve. Heartbreak and emotional vulnerability. Everyone wants to fall in love, but no one's prepared for the heartbreak that might come with it. Even if you don't have an unhealthy attachment style, sometimes relationships just don't work out as well as we hoped. All the fights leading up to the breakup or perhaps your feelings weren't even reciprocated in the first place. And the anger and self-doubt that follow, <laughs> having to pack up all their stuff, avoid the places you used to go, and the mutual friends you had. Listening to sad songs on repeat and eating your feelings, wondering where things went wrong and if you could have done something different. The emotional hangover can linger for months. And though friends might try to cheer you up with advice and distractions, it can feel like nothing truly helps. Despite all these downsides, many people still believe falling in love is worth it. Why? Because when it's good, it's really good. The joy, the connection, the feeling of being understood and valued, those moments make everything we've listed here seem worth it. So don't think this is a cautionary tale against love. Just go in with your eyes open. Know that it is not all sunshine and roses, but also be open to the amazing moments that love can bring. So what do you think? Is falling in love worth the potential pain and heartbreak? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. And if you found this video valuable, hit like and share. Subscribe to our channel for more insightful content. We have videos on related topics like most relationships today are toxic, here's why, and you're not broken, the dating world is. Thanks for watching.